they say makes no sense. They're just, they're delusional. They're off in their little, you know, world gathering, you know, points for heaven which does not exist if they're Jehovah's Witnesses or they're just, they're just there. I mean, it's like they're robots. Honestly, they, they really don't have their own message. Did you know that God has a name? You know, and you're just... <laughs> I'm it's like I'm like, oh really? Uh, you know, do you? Yes. Well, I, I've seriously asked them. You know, I said I, I too go on visitation, and I said when I come to the door or talk to people, I my interest is to see that they come to know Christ as their Savior and they can be be saved. So, what what is your purpose being here? And they're very hard pressed, you know. I say, are you? Is it a quota? You're, you're for fun. To... Sometime go in the app store. If you have an Android or a, a, a Google Play, if you have an iPhone, whatever the, those people do to get apps, and just download a Jehovah's Witness in service app. There's an app called In Service. They're different. They actually would probably be helpful soul winning apps for you. But you'd be amazed at how you know it's logging hours, logging time. Is it really? Uh, yeah, yeah, it really is. And it's um, you know doing your God thing, you know basically. I mean honestly, if that's it's what it's good works. Because they've never been able to really answer that. No. They said you have the watchtower. But they are very effective, aren't they? I mean they they reach people, they get people to follow them. They, you know, they with their error they draw people in. You see and them in so, groups almost every Saturday morning. Every Saturday morning when we're out, I didn't, they're they're far more. They are far more prolific than we are because wherever we are, they are too. And they're where we're not as well. You know, so the fact is is that they're getting the word out. Whatever it is, I, it's hard to, <laughs> to figure. All right, I, I'm being a little bit not nice about that, but the reality is is that, yes, they're brainwashed and they're just sharing their secret truth that you'll never find by studying the Bible with people to impress you with what they know. Okay. So, if you and I could share the gospel with someone in two minutes, I believe it's a tool to help us be effective. Um, in the next couple of weeks, Brother Joel is going to be teaching just a door-to-door -door class, how to do door-to-door -door visiting and uh, how, to, how to be effective at it. And uh, he's going to kind of teach it almost from a salesman's perspective. In other words, this is how to, how to work prospects until you get results. This is how to get results on door-to-door. -door. Most of the door-to-door -door that churches do is you go out, you do a lot of work, and then you're like, well, we went out and did a lot of work, but there really isn't always an expectation of results. Mm -hmm. You don't expect to see the people you visited in church, and uh, there really isn't a knowledge of knowing how to keep following up on somebody until you see the results of your labor. So, okay, Three things you need to share if you're going to share the gospel in two minutes. What is the gospel? One word. Good news. That's two words. Salvation. 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 What? Who said it? Jesus. Jesus. The gospel is Jesus. Okay? When you talk to someone who is religious, terms are so generic that they're talking about one thing and you're talking about another. So when you talk about Jesus, you want to be careful, or when you're talking about the Gospel, you want to be careful to mention who you're talking about. You don't talk about God. You're talk Jesus is God. But you want to be very, very specific about what you're sharing with someone. And Jesus gets right to the point. I get people that they'll agree with me on everything, but if, but if we're talking about Jesus, they disagree. They're okay with God, but they're not okay with Jesus. And Jesus is the Gospel. Jesus is the Gospel. So when you're sharing the Gospel, one of the things you want to say is Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose again. It's very specific. You want to be very specific about the Gospel. One of my favorite verses, one of the ones just, I, I don't have a life verse. I, I'm, you know, different t times in life, there are verses that are just anchors for me. They're just, you know, they just that's what I need for that, that time in life. But John 14, 6, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
John 14, 6 has really defined my ministry and my gospel preaching ministry because Jesus is very exclusive. See, Jesus is the only way that you can come to God. And without Jesus, you cannot come to God. And so it's a very exclusive matter. If you have Jesus, you have God. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have God. So people want to talk about God, but when you talk about Jesus, all of a sudden, I've had people say before, well, you know what? I'm fine with God, but I just don't think I need Jesus. <laughs> In my mind, I'm thinking, well, Jesus is God. How can you say that? What do you mean? Well, I, what they mean is I don't want someone to die for me. I don't think it's right that I need someone to die for me. And I've had them say, well, I should be able to just come to God and work out arrangements with, between me and God. Well, you can, actually. You actually can do that. You can wait until the day that you meet God, and while you're on your face, you can say, God, I'm going to square this matter myself. I don't want your son who died for me. I want to take care of it myself. And God will say, okay. You have the right to do that. It's your choice. So you can go to hell for eternity in order to atone for your sin. Not atone for your sin. or isn't atonement. But in order to have ju the judgment for your sin. So you have the right to do that. But when it comes to having peace with God, it's only through Jesus, my friend. And it's amazing how people are okay with religion, but they're not okay with Jesus. And so we want to preach Jesus. You're not preaching the Gospel if you're not preaching Jesus. Okay. Jesus died. Alright. If I'm going to share the Gospel in two minutes, my first point is Jesus died. Then, is that the whole point? No. Why did Jesus die? Why did He die? You tell me. Okay, you got, you got your paper. Write your notes. Uh, if, you, if you have a pen. If you don't have a pen, too bad. Oh, I have one more. Anyone want my one more pen? There you go. You give it back later. Alright. Uh, Jesus died. Why did He die? For sin, right? For whose sin? Jesus never sinned. And this is just what I would say. Jesus died. Jesus died. Jesus died for sin. Jesus never sinned. He died for my sin. The Bible says. What's the Bible say about sin? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And by the way, you don't need to say, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, Romans 3.23, that little statement when you have two minutes is too much. See, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means everyone. You've sinned and I've sinned. And Jesus died. He's the only person who ever lived without, without sinning. He didn't die for his sin, but he died for mine. I'm glad he did. Yes, sir. Yeah, the concept of sin. People today, sin yeah. is an issue that's Yeah, so but in two minutes you're not going to explain that. Yeah, but I mean you've got to say that God... No, they're going to ask the questions. And yeah. We broke them. No, you're sin. not going to say that. I mean, you yeah, can if it's your two minutes. But in my I'll two be, minutes, you're I'll not going to say it. Two you're going to put it in yours. Okay, but here's why, Al. They're going to argue with you when you're done. In other words, you're going to get the gospel across in two minutes. And if you don't get more than two minutes, they, you, you may be dealing with an argument they don't even have. You know, not everybody argues that they're a sinner. Some people argue that I'm such a sinner I can't be saved. So it isn't everybody's argument. Uh, and But you can win that argument. You can show them the argument. But we're not going to get hung up because you're going to take 20 minutes showing people that all have sinned. So, no, but, no, but you, have to, you have to approach the accountability of man to God. Sure, sure. And however you do that, if you, somebody doesn't believe they're lost, then they don't need a Savior. Then they might just say, yes, I'll, I'll do something. But they don't see the issue. Of yeah, but not in two minutes. Why Again. do I need to be rescued? Why do I need to be saved from what? Yeah. Because of why? Yeah, but that's a that's a doctrine that you're that you're going to teach. Yeah. But you can't you can't do it in two minutes. Um, people are going to argue with you when you get done sharing you know, after two minutes. If they think I'm not a sinner or they don't know what sin is and they don't need to be saved, they'll tell you they'll tell you that. For instance, if if they never got it, it never occurred to them that they need to be saved from anything. When you get done and you say, "Would you like to receive Jesus as your Savior?" Do you think you should receive Jesus as your Savior? They're going to say, I don't see why I need to. You say, well, you know, we talked about being a sinner. Do you, do you understand that? So you're, you're going there. You're going to get there. But if you don't get there, you wasted, you know, you're not, you're not getting anywhere. I'm not saying Here's the here. point. Here's the point in the two minutes. I want to talk to somebody that's not going to talk to me. 
In other words, you, I want to have a conversation that I couldn't have otherwise. And here's what I found. Most people, if they can end the conversation, immediately will. But if they get in the conversation, they they actually might enjoy it. It might if they find out, you know, you're not from outer space, you're you know, you're friendly, you don't mind if they argue with you or ask you questions, you're affable and that sort of thing. After a little bit, people like to talk about politics and they like to talk about religion. What they don't like is to be uh, dealt with about being wrong. I don't mind it doesn't bother me a bit if somebody disagrees with me. Sometimes it flabbergasts me a little bit at how whacked people can be about thinking, but they're flabbergasted by me just as much. So if what I'm trying to do is have a conversation, and that's, that's the point of the gospel in two minutes. If you can't share the gospel in two minutes, you'll share the gospel less than someone who can. So we're, what we're talking about, we're not talking about, you know, this is, this is the best presentation of the gospel you possibly could have. What we're talking about is getting a chance to share the gospel when you wouldn't otherwise. And people tell you when they go soul winning with me that I get people to talk that normally wouldn't talk. You know, you get in a conversation with somebody, and normally you wouldn't get anywhere. They'd be just be, you know, I mean, sometimes you can't get anywhere. Sometimes people threaten you the first motion. You know, if you don't get out of here, you know, I'm going to kill you or whatever else. And, you know, you don't get past the threat, maybe. But uh, I'm kidding. That, that's very rare that that ever happens, okay? Uh, and not usually in this area. Yes, Joel? You have I, I was just going to say the whole point of the two minute elevator speech is to keep some of interest and they'll talk for longer. Yeah, yeah. Again, I've never had anybody hold me to two minutes. But I'm going to keep my word. I'm going to do two minutes, and after that, they're going to. After that, they've surrendered their time. They've said, "Okay, let's have a conversation." You know, uh, salesmen do the same thing. Um, and I feel badly for salesmen. You know, especially when they try to sell me something because I don't want it. And I'm not going to buy it. I'm just. You know, I usually try to just tell them straight up front, you know, I'm probably like the worst guy ever to talk. Let's talk about something else, you know, other than selling something because you're not going to sell me anything. You know, I'm too cheap, and, I, you know, you have a hard time presenting. Yeah, well, let me try, you know, whatever people do. Uh, salesmen, you, you want to get out of a conversation with a salesman as fast as you can. And we're not salesmen when we're preaching the gospel. People see you that way. You're trying to give them something they don't want to have. You're trying to take some, take their time. You're trying to get an audience with them, and they don't want to give you an audience. So that's what that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get two minutes, okay? Jesus died. He died for sin. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible also says that the wages of sin is death. Death is separation. It means that it, it's it's the separation that we understand when a person dies and their soul leaves their body. But it's talking really about eternal separation where a person is separated from God for eternity. Because of sin, we're separated from God. The Bible also says that Jesus uh, rose again. Now, this is what... Now, let me ask you a question. Why? Why, did Jesus, why was Jesus risen from the dead? What are some things about Jesus being risen that is, essential, that is an essential element of the Gospel? It wouldn't have helped you. Okay, without the resurrection, Jesus just died. Um, you ever ask the question? You get on, 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 on muddy ground when you ask a question like this, but you ever ask the question, what if Jesus had just died for our sins? We wouldn't have the hope of being resurrected. But could God not have restructured things? Could He not have just set up his kingdom instantly and come down, dealt with the problem of the sin nature and redeemed us? Frank? I just want to say that it showed that he conquered that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Jesus rose again. He conquered death. That's the biggest problem anybody has to worry about. And you could just say that. Death's the biggest problem that we have to worry about. It's the thing that separates us from our loved ones. It's the thing that has the most unanswered questions. Jesus rose again to conquer death. Very good. Yes? It also shows that proved that He is God. Sure. Sure. It's a, 
It's something only God could do. And that's a miracle. It verifies everything he said. Yep. If Jesus hadn't been risen, then nobody would have known that he conquered death. No one would have known it. Okay? So Jesus rose again. Okay, so we could make those statements, couldn't we? Now, you know what the Scriptures are, but you don't have time to share all the Scripture, right? You know, you could go to any of the Gospels and just go to the end of the Gospels and share the resurrection. You could look at the fact that Jesus promised He would die. So Jesus rose again. Okay, so let's, let's get a synopsis again. When we say Jesus rose again, what are the important things we're going to tell somebody about the resurrection? The resurrection shows that Jesus conquered death. It shows that that what that he's alive and we can be alive. Okay, what else? Somebody else said it. It proves that he is God. Okay, so that's your second point: the resurrection. Okay, third point, number three. Uh, you know what? I didn't. I didn't. I skipped third. I went right to rose again. <laughs> Jesus was buried. Okay, let's go. Let's backpedal just a little bit. We are, good thing we got to the resurrection, right? We preached it in the right order, according to some people. Um, Jesus, you ever hear somebody, you know, though, yeah, you preached, to, you know, you preached about the cross, but you left Jesus on the cross, and you know, the whole, you know, never leave Jesus on the cross. Always preach the whatever. Well, we did it right today. We forgot to bury him. Okay, so we took him right from the cross to. Well, okay. Anyway. <laughs> Jesus was buried. What's the significance of the burial of the Lord Jesus Christ? What? Yeah, prove that He really died. He really actually died for our sin. Um, the burial was a, a time of separation. So, He suffered something that you and I can't comprehend because Jesus is God. Here's a statement where you're going to talk about the Trinity. They're going to talk about the Godhead. If someone does not acknowledge the Godhead, they cannot believe. There are individuals that confuse me, people that are getting, for instance, into the church of God and so forth, where they believe that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost are separate gods, that they're all God, but they're, but they're not one. You know, an almighty God can't have peers. He can't have equals. And so what they do is they make Jesus less than God. They make the Holy Spirit less than God. And so if Jesus is less than God, my friend, He is not God. If the Holy Ghost is less than God, He's not God. But God is three in one. And one of the things that God did that we can't comprehend, and you, you should tell people this. It's not a problem to tell someone. I don't understand it. But God turned His back on His Son, and, and Jesus died. He was separated from God. He had our place. He had our position when He was separated from God. Three days is important. Why? Why is three days significant? What? He didn't see corruption yet. Yeah, it takes four days before your body to begin to corrupt. Before it begins to actually rot and decay. And so Jesus' body didn't see corruption. He was resurrected before, the, before corruption. But three days is long enough to know for sure someone's dead, right? So Jesus really died. Okay, then He rose again. Now, then what's our conclusion? Jesus died, Jesus buried, Jesus, Jesus was buried, Jesus rose again. What's our conclusion? You need to receive Him as your Savior. Yeah. Okay. What does the Bible say about that? Yeah, you must be born again. I'd love to tell John 3. It takes about 2 minutes and 30 seconds to quote John 3, 1 through 36. So it's about 2 and a half minutes to quote John 3. So that's an alternative method for you if you'd like. You could quote 1 through 18. Yes, ma'am? I didn't hear. Okay, you can only come to, to the Father. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here's to John 14, 6. Charlie? Uh... Also in Acts 17, that uh, by him he did one that said uh, to judge the whole world. In other words, uh, Jesus being raised from the dead is demonstrative proof of the witness of the fact that okay, God has set him as not only this, okay, he's a, a 
Yeah. Can you explain that in two minutes? Or in a third of two minutes? <coughs> it's a good point. It's an excellent point. That's an answer when somebody has a question. But we're trying to conclude Jesus died, Jesus was buried, Jesus rose again in a way that someone could get born again. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, Romans 10, 13, Isaiah. Um, yeah, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, so it's a man be born again. What? Except a man be born again. Yeah, except a man be born again. Cannot see the kingdom of God. Yes. A good transitional thing after you give the gospel. Say, uh, God did his part. You want to know what your part is. Yeah. God did his part. You know, I want to know what your part is. I, one of the things I oftentimes say is that Jesus died for the whole world, but the whole world isn't going to heaven. And so, what makes the difference? Yes, Frank? I was just going to say, uh, a lot of times I use that as a free gift. And, uh, mm -hmm. I can work for it. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's change the scenario. Let's use a Ron Comfort. You like this one, Charlie? Ron Comfort ran over a man. And he was dying. And only Ron Comfort would use illustrations like this. But what did he say? Charlie, tell us the story. Give it, give it to me. You'd know it better I would. Do it fast. He was having trouble with his eyesight. So it was a the And we can't really be seen until the last minute. So he, he... I don't want to hear about how the man got hit. He got hit. Let's get there. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> he gets out. Minute. First thing he thinks about... Do you know where you're gonna, you know where you're gonna go when you die? He, he just begins what is it going right there? You know. Okay. These scenarios do happen. You could be in a scenario where for one of two reasons, either you're passing a person and you'll never meet them again. You you're gonna be with somebody for two minutes. You could do this on a bus. You could do it on an elevator. Literally you could be in a place where you're never gonna see a person again. And maybe this is the only time the person gets to hear the gospel, and you got two minutes. Hey, can I take two minutes to share the gospel with you? Maybe they don't have time to ask. Maybe you just better tell them. You know where you're going. Somebody's dying. And it's vital that we know how to just boil things down. The fact of the matter is, when someone is on their deathbed, a lot of their objections are gone the hold of the world on a person ha is released. Um, my dad had so two friends. One of, his, one of my dad's friends died a couple of months ago. I shared the gospel with him I don't know how many times. Every time we got together, you know, he'd ask questions and we'd go at it, you know. And, you know, and basically what he said was, I'm too much of a shyster to get saved. You know, I'm too, I'm, I'm too rotten of a guy. And I mean, he, he had... Um, a wealthy businessman. He'd taken advantage of probably everybody in town. Nobody liked him. Had no friends except for my dad. And um, every time we talked to him, he'd say, "I can't be saved. I'm, you know, I'm too wicked." And that's what he told my dad on his deathbed. He said, "You know what? I, I'm too wicked to get saved." My dad said, well, "You need to get over that and realize that Jesus died for sinners." Ultimately, I believe what he was holding on to was he didn't want to give up being what he was and give up having what he had. But he was faced with the reality that he was losing those things. And that changes perspective. You say, well, pastor, that's not right. Somebody shouldn't get saved like that. You know, they ought to live for God. Listen, it's not right that any of us got saved. If you want to try to pull that argument, you're going to cut your own feet out from underneath you because you didn't deserve it. I don't care if you lived your whole life for the Lord Jesus. You didn't deserve it. And if you want to say somebody doesn't deserve to get saved because they're not going to do enough for Jesus, you aren't either. And that's the reality of it. And... Uh, uh, I remember a man, a Jewish man, my, my mom and I were witness to when I was in college. And, you know, it's the whole Jewish versus Christian thing. And, and uh, But when he was on his deathbed, he gave up Judaism. There was no eternal life for him. There was no gospel in Judaism. He took Jesus, you know, just a few weeks before he died. And I know of a number of individuals that think that that thing has happened. And so you, you don't, like Brother Al said, you know, a lot of people don't even understand what sin is. Well, most of them do. Most of them are lying about that be honest with you. I don't think most people try to claim they're not a sinner. They're not being honest. 
Uh, the way I always deal with that, Al, is I always say, well, is there someone I could ask? You have your wife or your kids? You know, if they tell me they're not. Because I do have people tell me, well, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a sinner. You know, I don't, God wouldn't judge me. God wouldn't send me to hell. Was well, there anyone I could ask to verify that? Your parents, your wife, your kids, you know, somebody who knows you, somebody you work with. Is, nobody's ever been upset with you. No one's ever had a problem with you. Nobody feels like you've wronged them, like you've ever done anything wrong your entire life. You know, well, that usually gets the point across pretty quickly. You know, and it's always funny, if the, especially if the wife is there. Or say, you mind if I ask your wife about that? And they always, she always starts laughing, like, <laughs> you know, because we're all sinners. So, um, guys, you could share the gospel in two minutes. We didn't get our conclusion. Let's, we're, we're three minutes past time now. But let's, let's talk about the conclusion real quickly. John 3, 16. 3, 16, 17, 18. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God says if you'll trust Jesus, if you'll believe Jesus, that you'll have everlasting life. And the Bible says right after that, He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed. You have to believe on Jesus in order to have that free gift of eternal life. Do you have any questions? And that's how you end. You know, would you would you like to receive Jesus? But before that, do you have any questions? Well, you're done in two minutes, and you kept your word. You shared the gospel. Jesus died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose again. Do you have any questions? And now you get as much time as they have. If they're really going somewhere, if they're really doing something, now you get you get to have this conclusion. You know, this is really important, isn't it? Probably. If you, it, it, we should probably talk about this again another time. Here's something I've learned to do um, when I'm doing door-to-door, -door, and Joel will talk about this when he does his class. But uh, one of the things I've learned to do is get information from people. Say, you know what, you probably don't like me just showing up at your doorstep like this, and I understand that because I don't know your schedule, I don't know your time, and you don't know me. Could I get your phone number and I could call you before I come next time? And they'll give you a phone number just to keep you from coming. But you got their phone number. <laughs> and so you just generated a contact. And now they've heard the gospel, and the Holy Spirit's going to work on them. See, this is one of the things, guys, this is not sales. See, you don't give a presentation, leave, you know, I'm going to leave this Tupperware with you, and I'm going to come back again in a couple weeks or whatever, and have the Holy Spirit of God work on the, on the buyer during the week. But when you preach the gospel, God, the Holy Spirit, begins to work. And He works the circumstances in their lives. He, 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 he works in their thoughts. He gives them questions. He gives them conviction. And the next time you have a conversation, I'm telling you, it's on. I mean, you're, it's wide open. But again, what's the point of sharing the Gospel in two minutes? Well, it may be the only chance somebody has, but it may be the only chance you have to get in a conversation with them. And it should be really helpful. I hope that will help uh, would be a good lead-off for Brother Joel as he starts next week and sharing the gospel or on, and uh, how to do effective door-to-door. -door. We want to uh, really encourage you in the next couple of weeks to come to the next classes. It'll be at least two weeks, and I really want to urge you to come because it's, it's vital for you not just to go on door-to-door, -door, but to learn how to be good at it, learn how to be effective at it as believers. Yes, sir? Is he going to do it like for Sunday school? Sunday school. Be, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure will. So. Okay, let's dismiss in prayer. Father, thank you so much for what you've taught us today. Thank you for the opportunity that we've had. And I just pray that you would uh, instill in our hearts these simple truths and to make us more effective in preaching the gospel of Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed.